Okay. Hi, everyone. So I guess we are live once again. Uh, I want to welcome you all for the fourth masterclass uh, uh, of Interactive here on our YouTube channel. Uh, I hope you are all having a fantastic day as much as we are excited to, to start another of our live events. And today we are going to do a very different masterclass. Today we are live coding uh, an interactive interface and we have uh, Pedro Oliver and, uh, and David Marques to, to, to guide us on this, on this masterclass. So, and first of all, uh, as we do every time, let's jump into what we have planned for you today. So, uh, as you can see on your screen, on your index, um, can you, uh, okay. Uh, we, uh, we are going to present you an interactive, what we are and, and, and what we do. And then we are going to live code uh, 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 an interactive interface whilst uh, identifying UI components in a screen. And then we are going to, to wrap it up and uh, giving like a, a quick brief on what we have done. So let's talk about our interactive, what we are what, and what we do. If you have attended to, to previous masterclasses, you will know that uh, we are a, a company that has its main focus on producing the best digital experiences uh, every uh, businesses every business can get. And of course, we do that by designing amazing user experience, deliver a beautiful application whilst promoting uh, scalability, consistency, and maintenance for the OutSystems platform. And speaking about OutSystems, uh, we must say that we are partners with them for many, many years now, uh, being now a, a certified delivery partner. And our main focus with this partnership is front-end development. And of, of course, now that we have talked about this partnership, let's talk about our main goal. Uh, that is uh, the wow experience and you can get that uh, the wow experience is as i've said before the best digital experience every business can get and we do that by uh, as you can see on your screen by these main topics like ux research ui design ui architecture front-end development and this is a very important topic for us because we are taking our first steps into delivering full solutions ui development ux design without forgetting the the quality part so and we, uh, by doing this, we have some common uh, aspects and common actions that we do in every project. Like, you, as you can see on your screen, the assessment report, that is a, a document in which we describe the, the state of the art of our clients' applications, the user research reports, UX and UI prototypes, UI themes, UI architecture. That's one of our main goals on our main steps to, to success. UI components, delivering them into separate ways. The, uh, our systems UI components fully customizable and the custom components and of course the, the, the design system. And with that being said, you have high interactive in a nutshell. Uh, before we, uh, I pass the ball to, to Pedro Oliveira to, to lead this presentation, I will advise you to, if you have questions, we are going to answer to all of them, as you know, uh, at the end of the presentation. I will advise you to put all the questions whenever you want in the chat box uh that you have uh, on your on your screen and uh, of course uh if you want to 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 see what we are doing is if you can see on the top of your screen you have a qr code you can scan it and watch the the magic that it's happening on this live code experience so i would like now to 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 pass the ball to pedro to lead this presentation on hi pedro how are you doing i'm fine Thank you, João, for this introduction. So, without further ado, uh, before starting with our uh, component, let's just talk a little about um, atomic design. Uh, that's basically what is promoted by um, by our system and by local. So, as you probably know, uh, life on Earth it's basically composed by at at atoms that, when grouped together, they form mo molecule molecules. And when grouped together, they form organisms, so life, okay? So we have these three uh, basic uh, components. Um, and uh, if we talk about design, it's basically the same, okay? So we have elements that, when grouped together, they start forming components. 
elements could be things uh, like a button uh, that when we combine different elements, we start getting a component, things like uh, a section expandable, for example. And when we start composing, uh, grouping different components, components together, we start getting to a page or a section or something else, okay? Uh, so if we if we group together a button, uh, an input parameter, and a label, everything together will form will uh, will create a form, uh, and the form will be inside the page. So we get to our final page. So basically, low code, as I said, follows this uh, methodology of building uh, with blocks. All right. So if we want to build something. We may make uh, make that something uh, by using components, uh, functions, uh, and in integrate what we have with other components and and everything else. So we build based on um, on blocks. So if we bring everything together, you can see that elements are, are atoms, as I said. Um, things like buttons, uh, colors, everything like that, the most simple uh, elements that we can have. And then molecules are components, more complex uh, things, and organisms are um, similar to screens, okay, where we have all our components and elements living uh, together, all right? And, and, and basically these are the, 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 the blocks or the, the pieces that uh, uh, brings everything uh, together and this is the base of uh, the atomic uh, design all right so that being said let's talk about uh, creating a component and integrate uh, a component on um, on a screen so we are going to do this today Base, basing, uh, everything is going to be based on these uh, four premises, all right? We are going to follow the atomic design approach that, that, that we talk. We are going to use uh, the OutSystems UI theme. We are going to just change uh, some uh, CSS classes and create new ones for our new component. Uh, we already have uh, developed uh, an application, so, uh, because we don't have a lot of time today uh, and to, to make this uh, simple, we already uh, built an application um, which we already have CSS and JavaScript to, to show you. And we already have some, some data that we are going to use to, to fulfill our screen, uh, our um, list of uh, products and the details uh, for each product, all right? So the three main tasks that we have here, and this is basically the process that we that we um, that we go through when we need to create a new component. We first we uh, after we, we we receive sorry we after we receive the the UI the design from for for instance the design team, we are going to analyze the component and understand what the component is going to need its requirements, then we start building the component and then we test it and integrate the component in a sample app, all right? So what we have today for on our menu is basically two screens, okay? One screen uh, that we are calling here the welcome screen with the background image, text and buttons. And after this, the user uh, will enter the second screen that is basically a list of um, of products uh, with a search box and some secondary information. All right, and the objective is, um, and it's going to be the main focus for today is about this um, custom component here. It's the one that we are going to build, and when we click on it, we want to expand uh, the, the 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 cards to fill the entire screen. Okay, without changing to another page, without losing any kind of context. So we want to accomplish this just by using JavaScript and CSS. And uh, when we click to go back, the component will go back again to its place. 
the original place. All right. So we will end up having these three, two pages and three different states. All right. Because this is not a page. This is just a, an overlay uh, on this uh, list. Okay. So let's start by identifying what we have here, our needs. So we start here to identif by identifying the components from our systems. We have a bunch of components, things like buttons, for example, the search input from our systems. We have images uh, for the, 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 the iconography. We are going to use the, the SVG component from, from, uh, from our systems and a lot of other components. And then we have our um, our main component for today. That is, uh, we are calling it product card. Again, we click on it and we show the the, um, the full information for uh, for the card. All right. So this is basically all the components that we need to build this application. So now about the requirements. All right. And when we enter this phase of requirements analysis. Uh, this is the place where we are going to identify everything that we need, all right? Things like identify that we need an image, we need a, a price and a description. We are going to show a list of similar uh, products. In, in, in this scenario, uh, we are talking about plants. We are going to need a place to click and add this product as a favorite. Things like that, all right? And then we need to identify uh, all the, the the interaction points that eventually are going to trigger events so for 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 these uh, components we have a click event here on the card that is going to expand it we have another click event uh, to close the the overlay with the, the details of uh, the cards of the product and two other uh, click events, one to trigger, the, uh, to save the card as favorite, and another one to add the product to our shopping cart. And attached to these uh, three click events, we are going to have, um, we are going to trigger four, uh, uh, four different events, okay? So when we click, on the smaller card, we are going to trigger an event to the page saying that the card is now expanded. When we click on the back, again, we are going to say the page that the card is closed. So we can, so, uh, so the page can perform things like refreshing the uh, a list um, on the page. And the last two trigger, the events that you are going to trigger uh, are the add to favorites and the add to shopping cart. Okay. All these events are going to be sent to the page. So, ends on the base idea here is to transform this smaller card into, um, into a, a, its bigger version, okay, to cover the entire screen. And the, the, the idea is as the video is going to expand in more detail next, using JavaScript, we are going to clone these uh, cards. And uh, when the animation, uh, uh, so uh, sorry, we are going to clone the card. So using animations, we are going to transform it and put it uh, occupying 100% uh, of the page. So basically showing it as, um, as an, an overlay. So after this, uh, we are going to, we, we need to understand uh, how this is going to happen. So how can we show and hide content? And for that, we want to show um, the details of the, this product only after the, the, the expand animation ends. And for that, again, we are using JavaScript and something called event listeners that you probably um, used already. And one in particular, particularly, one in particular uh, called transition ends, all right? That is going to detect when uh, an event associated to, the, to a specific element ends. So when this happens, we will add a class 
to our DOM saying to, to the CSS that, CS, that, that you can now uh, start showing uh, the elements that, um, that are hidden on, on the page. Um, and then what's left here is to make sure that all these animations, because we are going to animate an image, we are going to animate text, buttons, a lot of different types of elements. So we need to make sure that everything is as smooth as possible, okay? And by to do that in, in the best way, in one of the best ways is to make sure that we are going to use absolute positioning translation, translate, translation, translations, sorry, things like translate uh, X or translate uh, Y and opacity. Okay, so by doing this, using this technique, we uh, can kick off the GPU to, to use uh, hardware acceleration to, to move elements on the page, all right? And uh, this is, uh, this is done uh, initially by the browser, all right? So the, if the browser knows that the element that we are trying to move will not affect everything, every, it will not affect the other elements on the page. And the element that we are moving is not going to repaint, is not causing a repainting on the page. And that is done by opacity. Opacity is not going to repaint. Uh, the the GPU will kick off and assist the the browser uh, animating the um, the the elements. Okay, so the the consequences is that we are going to have a, a, a smoother animation. A lot is a, a lot can be said about the uh, the GPU composition, but it's not the focus today. So David, uh, now I'm going to ask your help. To, to show everybody uh, what we prepared and we are we will start building our uh, component component um, based on the, the application that we already start developing thank you thank you Peter yeah. so as you can see we already pre built uh, an application and probably already saw that we already built the application obviously to test but as you can see here, we have a, a, the home screen. Um, and also we can uh, click here to go to, to my home screen. The previous was, um, <coughs> sorry, um, a welcome screen. So here we already developed the, the bottom and then the top section. And what we will do is create the component to fill the list and do some animations in this specific component. So let me open my my service studio as you can see it's the home screen here only to show you we already have here the the welcome screen and the welcome screen is a layout blank with some css to, yeah, show, quite to show yes yes super simple so home screen and the home screen what we want to do is fill the the content so with the list of categories and the list of products in the first moment, what we need to do is create our component, uh, as Pedro explained it. Only yeah. to, to, to do in the first moment, let's create our web block. Uh, we'll call it product. Yeah, we are Art. going to build the, the components. And we know now that we are going to use this component inside the list. And to populate that list, we also developed previously um, a separated module with the data that we are going to use here exactly. and the video will show you the next uh, is going to to make a call to to that module to retrieve data and display the data here okay the first yeah. moment let's create our wrapper we use uh, many code conventions in this case for for atomic design and, and css uh, we follow this with high High quality, and this guy's product cards. Okay. Yeah, we are. Uh, if you are, uh, if you, if you are seeing what the video is typing, you will probably will start identifying what is the naming convention that we are using here. Yes, it's the BEM uh, naming uh, convention. All right, so separate. 
using so let's create the, the input parameters. So the API for our components. In this moment, I need an ID, I need a name, um, mm -hmm. I need uh, a bit price, description, an image URL, uh, image URL, oh, sorry, image URL. I will set an image URL, obviously, with the text. Mm -hmm. It's because we want to simplify um, price, price, as you said, sorry. Yeah. Price. Price can be decim decimal, but for now we don't. It's all artisans already do for us. Yeah. Uh, and also his favorite. favorite because we have a button to toggle the yeah. favorite. Okay. We are going to need to be false. Yeah, we are going to need also a list of image now, URLs. And a list of thumbnails, exactly. Yeah. The images. So this list is going to be visible in in the details of the product for the similar let, products. Let me simplify. We want to create a list of a simple uh, list of texts, OK? Text, yeah. A uh, list of URLs. OK. Yeah, basically um, what we are doing here is to, to, to use um, non indirect references exactly. so we can use indirect references instead of having a, a binary a binary data we exactly can, we are going to use uh, it's a simple rail as you can see here we have an action Pedro already says an action here an action here so back button uh toggle uh, favorites and add to cart so to create this uh, events for another developer to the parents to give feedback to the parents. We need to create also actions because we only can call uh, events in this case because we will call events from the JavaScript. We need an action to to do this. So in this case, we need um, close we need for for actions. Open okay. close. Yeah. Um, more open as you said. Um, and the add to cards, he toggles it. Add to cards yeah. and toggle. toggle. And the toggle favorites, yeah. Favorite. So when we click the star. And also the event, as I said. So the events will awesome. enable uh, the parent from our, our component to receive some feedback. Um, it's a way to do outputs from our block. Yeah, so and usually, please. sorry, David. No, no, please, please. No, I was going to say that um, by default, all systems uh, set these events as mandatory, OK? But nice. by experience, most of the times, these events don't need to be uh, uh, to be mandatory, OK? Mm -hmm. So we don't need to. To, to force the developer to create dummy actions on the page side, the field. for instance, <laughs> just to just to to fill the the, 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 the required yeah. <laughs> event. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, errors so, will occur. And add to cart, we'll head uh, our head to cart events. Uh, I'm I'm doing this. We need. We don't need every time an action to call an event. It's not needed, yeah. but we'll call an action, an event from JavaScript. So if we call it an action from JavaScript, uh, an event, sorry, we need an action, okay? Uh, but we don't need to create an actions to call mm -hmm. an event, okay? If you we have, for example, a button, you can assign directly uh, an event. It's possible. Let me please but check if we have all the events as non-mandatory. Close the event. I will check, open, open event, open events, and also a uh, toggle. Yeah. Oh, I forget the toggle. No, it's two favorites. OK. Yeah, two favorites. OK. So our API is already built. Now let's take care about the HTML. The structure. So in, yes, the structure. So as Pedro said, we use a, a specific code convention. We will learn our code convention. It's super simple. Um, 
So an image, in this case, we have, we need an image, will be an extra URL that will be filled by our parameter. And don't forget our code convention in the case, products, yeah. and and it's it's cards, it's card, sorry, uh, image. So it's always our, the best practice to have a wrapper. Exactly. I don't think you talk about yeah. that yet, right? Yes, we already have, we have a wrapper. wrapper. Yeah. So everything that is going to live inside the component is inside this wrapper, this main component. Exactly. exactly. And typically the class, the class name, it's the same mm -hmm. from the web block name to be easy uh, be matching the HTML. And the CSS. And so, so in this case, BTN uh, product. It's a back BTN. As you can see, I already have suggestions because I already have suggestions class in my in my theme. The CSS is already done. So and obviously select the the class. As you can see, you can select yeah. the, the events. Okay. But let's choose the the class, the, the action because we need to call uh, events from the, the JavaScript. Yeah. So in this case, it's not closed. Uh, it's closed, yes, sorry. Now, let's create um, the, the resume. You need to change the the content of the button, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So we want to show, uh, we want, we want to show uh, an icon. Uh, a back, yes. A back icon, yeah. So we'll do that. With SVG, yeah. it's it's a simple way for now. Okay, you obviously you can use uh, mm -hmm. for family, uh, but it's a simple way. Let's set my SVG. Okay, and also let's do our resume containers. Resume containers will appear the price, the descriptions, the favorite button, something like that. So in this case, product resume. Uh, I left my space here. And as you will see, um, not all the content, not all elements, but uh, quite a few will be position absolute. Mm -hmm. I was talking before. So we will have uh, the back button as a position absolute, the image as a position absolute also. And these expressions, the but button that we will place on the footer will also be absolute. So this way we can perform and we can apply uh, a transaction uh, uh, um, in the and and as I said before, we are going to try to to use the the GPU to assist us. Yes. into getting a smoother animation, yeah. I'm doing, in this case, it's creates the the elements for our for our text, for our description name, and mm -hmm. also price. Here, I will add our toggle button for favorites. Obviously, it's the simple way. It's add the next checkbox and apply CSS is favorites. Uh, in this case, I will add um, a class uh, products. I think the, 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 the most obvious thing, the, the main advantage by using it, it, to use a checkbox for this kind of uh, problems, like having a toggle button to show to, 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 to that will have uh, an on and off states. If we use this, the checkbox, all the logic uh, to turn on and off is already implemented because this is uh, HTML and HTML is something that lives on the browser. We don't need to, to bother with this. So only with CSS, applying CSS, we can completely transform uh, a checkbox and an HTML checkbox element into almost any, anything that we want. So we don't need any kind of logic either from the platform or from JavaScript. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is creating the the thumbnail similar plans. Okay, at least. So 
So a container with a class gallery, uh, you, we, we use the HTML elements uh, mm -hmm. because it's a best approach for SEO and obviously yep. accessibility. So we, we can use also the, the adding five class, but this is for us, it's the best way. Um, and, now, and also let me add a gallery. I can use a gallery here. So a web block from all systems UI to simplify because I already have displayed flex. And inside the gallery, we, we have a list. So, but we have a list that will be filled by image where real list parameter. Okay. And you need and to define the gallery to have three columns. Ah, yes. Yes. Thank you. So here, what we'll add, it's a, again, an HTML tag. Mm -hmm. That's why an HTML tag, because we need uh, an image. It's because uh, we did a... Um, this is a workaround. That's yes, this is a workaround, yes. <laughs> it will be an image that don't have um, original source URL. And we only had the source URL after the expand the, comp the, the, the components. So only want to see the thumbnails, we'll set the URL in, in those images to apply a um, type of lazy load. So the browsers only load the images after mm -hmm. the expand um, thumbnail, OK? A, 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 a very quick way of testing this. Oh, sorry, David. It's only because we are cloning an element, so we lost everything from, from Virtual DOM, from React, in this case, from the platform. So we cannot use the lazy load from the platform. The if condition and the, the list empty, for example, yep. we cannot use it for now. This, uh, this lazy loading of the images, let's call this way, uh, yes. it's, it's, it's easy to, to understand if you go, if, if later when the, the app is finished, if you go to the to the to if you open the the for instance the Chrome inspector, you can see that uh, even though the image tag is there, because there is no source attribute defined, there's no value for the source attribute defined. Uh, you you will see that there is no calls whatsoever to try to get that image. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the browser it's... don't know what he needs, where he needs to to call the 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 method, so it will not call anything at all. Exactly. Let me say something. Alt systems, it's it's missing a, a it, probably the the when we need the class, it will be the class uh, tribute class parameter will be in the HTML elements, but it's the yeah. one when I think it's the only the one where we cannot find the STM, the, the extra. class. So we need to add an extra an extra attribute to set the class. It's strange. <laughs> I believe that our system will, will solve this as as soon as possible. Uh, product cards in this case uh, button net to card. Exactly. Yeah. We also going to apply the action to the button. Exactly. So in this case, add to cart. I think I don't forget anything. Yeah. And probably you also need to uh, go to the checkbox and check if you have assigned the, uh, the, the, the action that you created before, assign it to the on change. All right. Yeah, you already have it. Yeah. But one thing, when I click in favorite, I need to, to send to the parents, to the, the action that will receive the event, the ID. I think I forget, forgot. So in this case, input parameter ID, right? Uh, oh, sorry, it toggle favorite. It's only in, the, in our event, sorry. In the event, yeah. ID here. Okay, and when you use add to cards, we need add to favorite, sorry. We need to set the ID because the parents that uh, use our components web block need to know. It's done. Um, what is missing? Okay, it's missing an, an event here in our wrapper 
on click to open our components, <laughs> the main main action. So the, the API is already done. Now what you need, when we click open, right, I need to apply some JavaScript. So here it's probably the most complex, but I believe that will be simple after our explanation. So in this case, I will get my, my notes in the first moment. What do you need to do? Let me explain this. So clone our element. What happened? When I click in the thumbnail, I will clone all, all components, OK? So here we need an ID because the JavaScript need to know each element will be cloned from the DOM. In this case, element ID. OK, OK, and need to set the element ID. I believe it's already available here, exactly from our wrapper, mm -hmm. from our components, OK? That's every time we will create a component, we add a wrapper. This is the one of the main cases. Um, OK, and also add the class, an extra class to know that this component is a clone. After this, what we need is position our image, the element that will be cloned, this, the image will be positioning in positioned in the same place of our previous original uh, component image. This way we can do the, the animation that it's like the original image it's expand, it expanded, okay? We'll be explaining. So what we do is get the image, uh, get the values from the position, get the, the new image, set the values from the previous position, the original image, okay? It's simple. And now let's uh, do a, a, a lazy loader workaround, as, as I said. What we do is work around. <laughs> In this case, what we do is, so in this moment, the, the, the components already uh, will be opened. So what we do is change the data source attribute to the source attributes for all thumbnails, uh, okay, for all image inside our, our component. And after this, when we apply the, when we clone the component, the browsers only render, only load, render not, only load those assets, those image, when yep. you, you, you open the, the component. So the, the elements already exist in the DOM, but don't have the image elements, but don't have source. So the dev source don't have assets loaded. Only after we set the source, the, the image will be loaded. OK, it's a uh, lazy load workaround. Yep. And now. What we do is uh, add an extra attribute to our clothing, clothing components only to know uh, when the component comments are open or closed. It's, it's, this is for animations. I need to know when we are doing an animation to open or when we are doing an animation to close. And we will understand why we need it here. Yeah. So I will have an, an event transition and to our image. So the image that will be expanded here to the, to this size, the screen size, entire size, 100% width, um, have a transition applied, an animation. And when the transition apply uh, ends, we'll check if I'm will uh, I'm opening uh, the, the detail of the component or I'm or closing. closing. Because if I'm opening, I will remove the element from the DOM. After close, we'll remove the, 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 the component cloned from the DOM. If I, I'm opening, I will have another class to do another animations, OK? To another, other extra animations. And as you can see, mm -hmm. why we need sometimes um, actions? Because we can use, obviously, events when you are clicking in something, because from the as we know until now, from uh, the JavaScript to call uh, uh, an event, we need an action first that after the action will call the, the event, OK? So that's why we create action for all events. And after that, 
we need another workaround. Uh, we believe that uh, existing another solutions, but when you add something to the DOM and you want to do an animation, obviously, obviously you can do okay friends and another type of animation, but who is who's a transition? Uh, you need to uh, have uh, different values. So the transition will be applied when you change, for example, the zero opacity to, to 50 uh, percent of opacity. If you add something to the DOM, you don't change any value. The, if the your elements already have 50 percent, you cannot feel uh, see the transition. So we apply. We did a, a workaround to apply set timeouts. Um, delayed to add the class. And this way, when you, we add the, the element clone it, after this, we add a class. And when we add this class, we will see, see the, the image expand animation, OK? Yep. And to finish, we have our events. For the our events for, for the, the buttons, basically. Yes. Why we need JavaScript events from the, to the buttons? Because we are cloning a new component. We are adding a new element to our DOM. But the, the original DOM, in this case, the DOM from our system, the React DOM, don't recognize our events. So we need to add uh, with JavaScript the events click, in this case, and call the, the actions, uh, the platform actions, OK? So this way, we add a button close. Obviously, yep. here, we only add or remove classes, because if I remove this class, the animation will end, and we call uh, uh, an event from the animation end from here, OK? And also, uh, add to cart event to, to call the, our, our action. That's this action will call our event. And also check favorite uh, that call our action. The ac and this this action will call our events. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, in the end, all adds our component to the DOM. And that's why that's why now why we need a clone components because yeah. this way we can animate everything in the top of our application without. Um, affect anything that already exists, OK? For example, if we have a new layer in top of our application. We don't have scroll issues. We don't, talk, we don't have um, uh, uh, event issues. So this way, we can avoid uh, possible issues. But obviously, we lost the, um, the original DOM. So we need, we need to be careful. But this is the best way to do some transitions between screens, for example. You can use action, call actions from JavaScript, but use your own DOM. So don't use the, the don't using the, the React DOM, okay? The platform DOM. Yeah, one, one thing that you have there mm -hmm. uh, is that you are using the stop propagation um, oh, yes. JavaScript. So basically yes. by doing that, you are saying that you are not allowing the the um, the user to scroll what's beneath the the overlay mm -hmm. the overlay uh, that was created uh, yes. by us. Yes, to avoid click. Yeah, something that is another layer above. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. so product is already created. I hope it's well created. So we can now add our component add to our screen. So create our list consuming. Oh, as yeah. you can see here, we have a list of categories that inside have a list of products. OK, so let's do it. In this case, we will have a list, right, of our data that already we already have, as Pedro said, an action that return our mm -hmm. data. OK, already fill it here. So here, what we will have in the first moment will be our um, category name. Let me only open my. Okay, there is something to follow. So here I will add uh, again an H5. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, with uh, text 
in this case that we a text node will be dynamic the expression expression in this case the expression will be filled by the name exactly mm -hmm. and also another list inside in this case we will use um, horizontal scroll not a carousel horizontal scroll uh, exactly and we, it will be cool to have some space between the adding and the list so something like giving a margin bottom and a margin left margin bottom uh, base probably i don't know yeah a, a small and left uh, medium small like here yeah something like that yeah and here probably you are oh, okay in the same yeah, margin bottom small and margin left Margin left. Uh, M. Uh, well, let's say M. Okay. So, and here we have need another list, right? Yeah. To display our um, display our plants, our our cards exactly. Why it doesn't suggest mine? So get categories in the first row we have. And the product in the second row we have the list, the list of our products. Category product, sorry. Yeah. Oi. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I'm just using that service to do. Come on. <laughs> I'm using a better version. So <laughs> hanging there. <laughs> so now what I need, fill my my data to my my component okay. description, description image url the thumbnail price is favorites a list of images and nothing more as yeah. you can see i forgot yeah uh, for example here i don't need a, an event for i i, I don't need to use uh, an add to cart events but uh, it's a required let me Fix my components. Uh, uh, just, just a, uh, a reminder. Uh, obviously, we have some time constraints here, so we are we are talking faster, and we are not talking about everything. Okay. Yes. So obviously, this masterclass will be available on on YouTube, so you can go and see it again and see it more with more uh, attention and yeah so don't worry yes. if, uh, if you miss something it's a lot of information for a few yeah. minutes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Let me only add a container because i will i have a warning but um we are basically comp uh, 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 um explaining in 30 minutes what usually takes like a day to build yes to do it so i think was around probably 11 12 hours yeah more than a day yeah probably two days yeah probably two days. i think i don't forget i already anything i already published let's try so for the ones of you who already scanned the QR code, if you refresh the page, you will now uh, be able to see what the vid is showing. Yes, on, it's already working. Screen. So as you can see, obviously it's working because we already have done the, the CSS, <laughs> yeah. okay? But I will explain. As you can see, the image will be expanded. Also the button will appear, okay? Um, and after this appear uh, um, the layer white, the white layer, and after this some some of elements uh, with different delays. Okay, delay time. Let's try understand. How yeah, David, if you if you can show um, the CSS that we made for for the transactions, it will be interesting to understand. Uh, the connection between the absolute position and opacities and why are we using that and okay, how are we moving and showing the elements okay let me only do, do a recap 
and we have uh, uh, the first state here from our original components. And for the first state, we have these classes, okay? Not clone, okay? Try to don't, why we, we use not? Try to don't do uh, CSS reflow and repainting. Don't override CSS, try to avoid. So this way, this CSS only be applied for this thumbnail, okay? So in the, this moment, we have CSS here. I think it's finish here for our thumbnail. Uh, the, the gallery will be hidden. Um, the, the checkbox will be hidden. The description will be hidden. Uh, the close button will be hidden. The, the add to cart. And here, the price, it's already there, OK? And also the resume, uh, the dark layer, and also the image here, OK? And obviously the active state. What is the active state? When I press, the the animation to be small appears. Okay. So, and this it's for the same the first part of our component. Now take care about the 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 animation. So when we click in our component, we clone. Let me show you. We'll clone. An element in the DOM as you, you see can the see. being created, and Outside. if you look if you cl look closely, you can see that the classes of this component, this container, are changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in two moments, let me say yeah. something. It, this is it's outside of the the Alt Systems platform, so the re, it's outside of React. It's outside of DOM, original DOM. Take care about this, OK? Uh, to do this, we need to understand well how the virtual DOM uh, works. So I click here. I clone a component. I add a, a class clone. And, and let's back to the styles. Let's back to the styles. That's my source. Uh, as you can see here, after to add the class clone, I already have another component, OK? Another element, sorry, with some some specific styles. So will be a fixed component and with entire screen, and the image will have some properties. Um, in this case, will be with the opacity one in the top. But for example, let me show you the name. Then it's a good example. In the first moment, we'll apply all styles from the original UI. Okay the font size, uh, the font weight, the color, OK? But um, we'll hide the name and also move 100 pixels to the bottom from the original uh, position that you uh, that you, we need. And obviously, apply a transition. What is the transition? A transition it's detects when some property change and apply uh, a time and the type of animation to your property and do this transition. For example, colors. In this case, for example, opacity. If you have 100% opacity and you change to zero, the transition will take 300 seconds to do this, this animation, OK? So but in the first moment, we have a clone component, clone element, sorry, with opacity zero. But 100 pixels above from our uh, original position. After this, and we'll do it for almost every elements in the um, in the in the components. After this, what we do is uh, add an, a class. Uh, sorry, no, it's not this class. Yeah. Product expanded. No. Yeah. And we'll apply it. Let me. Yeah. And we'll apply it opacity one. So the elements already have a transition property um, defined. So we'll have a 300 seconds animation for opacity and mm -hmm. back to original position. That's why you see the name from the bottom to the top. Imagine, imagine for example, that I, I will change um, let's back. Uh, yep. name, 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 name. If if we want to change uh, and 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 trans and show the title coming will... down from the top, is yes, this yeah. is what I'm doing now? It's from the top. So the 
the the key is it's easy position your your element uh, in the, another in the position that you want to do the movement and set when you want to apply the animation set the zero so yeah. it's easier to to understand how the animations will work so th what we do is it's it's simple how how it's happened let let me show you again the platform because probably it's difficult to understand open open here when the transition hands when the first animation hands the image i will head the class and as you can see this class move our, mm, almost all elements to the mm, original position. That's why you can see this type of transition, okay? This type of animation for the text, the price. I apply it almost to everything, okay? Another thing that is important, um, take care about the transitions. Obviously, only, obviously some, only all, some properties uh, have a well performance, okay? Opacity, um, transform, okay? Uh, take care about this. And another thing about the transitions, as you can see, for example, uh, the list of galleries came from the different delay, uh, different time delay. It's simple to apply this. You only need, for example, I did an example uh, for child, I think it's down on the code here. Yeah, I only apply the a different transition for for each element. Okay, because the elements already applied, uh, already set the transition time, already applied the movement a movement to a different position. So what I want only need is apply a different delay. Okay, for example, if I apply it, is you can see the difference. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, what's more, I think I don't forget anything. Yeah. I think I don't I forget. Think we have our component finished. Yes. So it's complex, but uh, for some use cases, in this case, clone your your element that you want to animate. It's better. Okay. But take care that. About this because you the you will lost the the platform features, okay, um, and for example, obviously you can do uh, something better here for some complex things. Create a, a object and instantiate uh, a new object, but the the main main uh, features here it's learn about transition ends and the way how you you can call actions. Uh, from uh, from JavaScript, so you can call platform actions from JavaScript. It's a better way to create complex things um, yeah. for your low code developments. Okay, we know this is not a low code, but sometimes you need to create this type of pieces, like uh, extend out systems UI to to answer the the guys that said it's not possible to do in our systems. Yes, it's possible. Obviously, sometimes you need to learn a bit about virtual DOM and transactions and browser performance. And sometimes it requires a lot of coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and, and uh, team job. Because obviously, it is impossible to know everything about yeah. best performance if you don't have uh, multi more than one guy working on this. Okay, Because we learn, because we have a big team and we share many, many of um, ideas and uh, workarounds to implement some some challenge. Yeah. We then? Yeah. So now to wrap up things, uh, let's, uh, I hope you, you, you learned something. Today we are aiming to do more, more master classes uh, like this. It, it, they are more technical, but I think it's uh, f f for us and for those of you that are listening to us, it's not uh, so uh, tiring of seeing just slides over and over. So if you see uh, someone creating something uh, live, I think it's it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Cool. So uh, um, just a reminder. Sorry. Yeah. 
if in this case, Pedro talking about the subjects for the next masterclass will be something like that, more technical, more uh, complex. Mm, okay, do something that typical we don't do in our systems. But let me say something. If you have an issue, if you have a questions, if you have suggestions to do a masterclass, because we don't know exactly what, what will be uh, cool to share, please give us a feedback. We can promote because we don't have a closed mm -hmm. subjects. We have a list of backlog to do to do it. But if you have ideas or something yeah. that can be great for commun community. Um, I, I will go further and if you want, if you'd like to see a component, uh, if you have a design with a very complex component, if you want us to try to implement it, suggest that to us. <laughs> that right? would be quite a challenge, no? <laughs> it would be a cool challenge for us and on top of everything, if, if we can share that with you, it will be pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, um, basically we are uh, going to, to, to add the, this small application to Forge. So stay aware for yeah. our social media. So when we do that, we will communicate for sure. Yeah, we'll uh, so you can go there, download it, inspect it and change it, or I don't know, apply these components in a project that that you that you have in hands so it's completely free of charge all right mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah Kalia, it's now up to you yeah my it's it's my part right now and before anything i would like to congratulate david and and also you pedro for the great job you have done on this master class and now let's go uh, dig into the questions we have so uh, I will advise you, because we still have time for that, if you have any questions that uh, you remain and haven't uh, put on our chat box, you are free to do it. But first of all, I would like uh, for you, Pedro, and also David, to debate just a little, a, a little thing that caught my eye. That yeah. was, uh, we have launched a pool on our chat box and 66% of the, the, the viewers, of our viewers right now, haven't used the GPU or the, the hardware accelerator to assist on the CSS animations. I would like to ask you, what is the, 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 the importance of this, uh, of this usage to, mm -hmm. to, to do things like this? I don't know, David. Uh, uh, what no. I can say is that doesn't surprise me. Uh, mostly be because ensuring that I'm using uh, hardware acceleration, uh, it's the same thing as the GPU, it's not that straightforward. All right, there's okay. uh, the, the, uh, so the browser can ask the GPU to kick off. The browser needs to follow a, lot, uh, a couple of rules, okay? Things like making sure that uh, the repaint there are no repaintings, elements on the page are not going to 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 change their position, the relative position, a, a couple of things like that. So sometimes it happens to me in the past. I thought that uh, just by using a CSS class name will change. Okay, there's a will change uh, attribute. Uh, there's a will change um, uh, attribute on CSS uh, that say that basically says to the browser that this element is going to change, right? And a lot of people think that just by calling this, uh, this is uh, this is what I need to use hardware acceleration, but this is not true, all right? This is happened to me in the past. I thought that I was using GPU, and then when I start using an application in older uh, mobile phones, for instance, I start seeing that, well, the animation that is pretty fine in the browser is not that fine in this uh, in this um, mobile device. Okay, so that's why this doesn't surprise me, and this is something that is not forward to understand. There are a lot of good articles on the internet that we can read to learn more about this. 
and yeah for for application mobile application i think 60 percent it's a surprise for me because i believe that will be 99 percent yeah um, <laughs> typically the it's 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 something it's it's not common to use only uh, in the mobile applications. In mobile applications, we have a challenge that's typical. The user feels like the application works. If you see an animation that doesn't work well, your feedback, it's like, oh, the application doesn't work. So when you want to, to improve your performance in your applications and do a live Facebook application, uh, the transitions, the reflow, repeating, so the performance, the DOM performance in this case, and for the example of um, GPU, it's yeah. the best. Uh, it's the best, probably the best way to improve your application. But not only, uh, not only the GPU. You have reflow repeating the way how to manipulate the DOM, but probably the the the, the feature that have more impact in your performance. And, and don't forget something that is it's quite important. Uh, sometimes we. We have a, a, um, a very quick application loading data. It's very quick loading data and things like that. But with if we have lazy animations running on top of everything, what the user is going to see is an animation that is going t -t 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 running very slow. Mm -hmm. And the feedback that the, the application is giving to the user is quite the opposite, that it actually is not that fast. And actually, the application is fast. But for the user, the application is slow and is glitchy and things like that. So that's why it's important to, to have this knowledge about uh, transforming every, putting everything as smooth as possible. OK. Yes, OK, and uh, thanks for, for your answers. Uh, another thing that I would like to, to, to ask you and also to, for you to analyze is that a similar percentage of, of viewers hasn't uh, uh, already used or, implement, or implemented translations. How do you feel that this is a, a thing that is important or how do you feel that this is kind of impressive that uh, we have uh, viewers that haven't uh at all implemented these kind of features well I, I don't know i don't know what kind of people is listen to us right yeah. now so let's say this way if we if most of the people that are seeing this live uh, master class are back-end developers that value does not surprise me wow. all right because that's not something that the backend developer, a pure or backend developer, usually does. Mm -hmm. If most of the viewers are front end developers or UI developers, in that scenario, that would surprise me, right? Because uh, we have modern browsers implemented nowadays in all our cell phones and and and, and computers. And this kind of CSS attributes uh, nowadays are very are very compatible with everything, and we live in 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 a, an era that we want to see everything moving from one site to another, and we want animations in everything. So yeah, that's that's my analysis of of things. So one on one side it surprised me, on the other it doesn't surprise me. I don't know, David. <laughs> Depends who will vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we kind of attached to to but it. I think we, it's we, we don't know. The other question. Yeah, I think it's connected. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I don't know. Okay, okay. we I, I think we we are it for for the questions. Without further to do, let me. In name of also Pedro and David, thanks all of you to 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 join us and to be to stick with us till the end of this masterclass. Uh, as also, I would also like to 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 um, to advise and to to ask you for uh, leaving the the thumbs up on this video and also share this 
because we think that is as great value for the ones that are listening to us and also to to stay tuned for our interactive social media we have plenty of more content coming for you not also not only on this channel on this youtube channel but also on our social media and th there we are going to to keep you up to what we are doing uh, and that's it thanks for for attending uh, i don't know if pedro or, or david would also like to say something no no, oh, thank you for everything. Okay. Thank you for, uh, yeah. for your time, and let's do for another for the next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take care. Bye, bye. See you. Bye.